Is that possible? Yes, of course. Okay, we have time. This is a 46 year old male, non smoker, with six to eight months of cough, with hemoptoic sputum, and a CAT scan in December 2021 with tumor of the mediastinum with invasion to the tracheal wall. This, um, uh, this CAT scan that was not in my, in my institution, but that I could uh, review, is not any different than the actual CAT scan. And the patient uh, was uh, admitted to our hospital with hemoptysis, with very, very mild hemoptysis. And this is our CAT scan. You can see here at the left paratracheal um, position in the mediastinum, just at the emerging of the sub left subclavian, left carotid, this soft tissue lesion, left paratracheal with dense calcifications that invades the tracheal lumen. Here is the plane of the aortic arc and in the sagittal, you can see the lesion very close to the carina with dense calcifications. Here you can see the lesion. Here you can see the emerging of the left bronchus and the coronal plane show us this lesion. Any one of you has seen a lesion like this? Bronchoscopy, you have images? Yes. We had a, we, we made him a flexible bronchoscopy that show us uh, a lesion that obstructs the 60, 70% of the of the lumen and was a biopsy without any result because the the biopsies by flexible only took uh, tracheal mucosa with inflammation and they, the pictures are not are not very clear because they, they were taken by the rigid bronchoscope where what I did was to make a debulking, an intraluminal debulking of the tumor. The tumor uh, is very ir irregular, but without mucosal comp uh, compromise. But in the debulking, I, I made it with a, a, a with the laser, with the neodymium jack laser. I could debulk the. Uh, until I could see the emerging of the left bronchus. And that's the image and the pathology is compatible with chondroma or a cartilaginous tumor well differentiated with a typical cell. That's the pathology. <laughs> <laughs> no evidence of metastatic disease elsewhere. No, no evidence of metastatic disease. And as I uh, as I told you, uh, as I told you, uh, the, the there has there's uh, there's no uh, increase in the in the volume of the tumor in six months. I compared the CAT scan uh, taken in December, in the last December, 
the volume of the of the tumor is the same and of course the patient with the with the, the bulking of the intraluminal the bulking uh, is being uh, is tolerating the exercise very well but i want your opinions i i, I don't know i really i really don't, I, I don't know what to do with this patient because i think that that the the resection of this tumor could be highly uh, highly morbid, and but um, I, I I I want your opinion. I have never seen one lesion of that, and definitely, uh, even being a, a benign tumor, the location is so bad. So yes. so. Dr. Cabrera. Yes, Dr. Awas. What would you do? Would you observe or would you respect? I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> Don't take too long, please. Oh, ready? <laughs> If we plan, if we plan a resection for this patient, we have to resect maybe half of the trachea, and maybe, maybe with uh, we could preserve, we could preserve uh, one centimeter above the carina, maybe. and make a, a, a resection, make, um, making this, this surgery on ECMO, what do you think? No, I, don't, I think if you do this, uh, obviously, with a, uh, um, unfortunately, it's more on the left side. Yes. I think the best approach for this, if you were to resect it, would be with a sternotomy, and you can probably achieve cross-stable ventilation uh, quite easily if you deliver the carina and place a, uh, uh, a ventilation tube through either um, the, just the right bronchus or alternate right and left. Um, and, and I think that the tracheal component will be shorter than the entire axial length of the tumor itself where you will resect kind of maybe a shorter length of the trachea itself compared to the overall length of the tumor. I'm hopeful <laughs> uh, because I don't, I don't think it'll be half the trachea. I guess uh, it might be, but maybe uh, three or four centimeters. Okay. Sorry, uh, I didn't see uh, very well the vascular point, but or, or the upper point of the trachea. But maybe it's a possibility there's some technique in, in pediatric tracheal surgery that is not a complete circular resection of the trachea. They, in some moments, they leave the part that are okay and make like a, like a leaf or a trans lap uh, of, the, of the trachea. They could uh, reflect only that point and do the, a resection like in not in a far way, in a diet way, and to uh, that gains a lot of centimeters of the trachea. It's a different approach and it's usually by the thoracic one. Okay. Anyone think that? Just to complete the endoscopic resection would be safe? In a chondroma, I think yes, doctor. It's a great, it's a really great possibility. And doing, of course, a close uh, vigilance of the, of the pathology. But I think it's safe. If you talk with the orthopedic, that works with orthopedic orthopedic, they usually observe this kind of tumors. 
on the dust of in, in, in a place that, that is too dangerous or is going to damage any articulation that usually they observe. It. What about the atypia? Did you talk to the pathologists? What degree of atypia? The last patient, they said atypia also, and it turned out to be a sarcoma. Yes. Yes, uh, the, they, uh, they observe uh, they observe atypia, but uh, the atypia was two, two atypic cells by field. I'm really concerned this is a malignant tumor. The patient has hemoptysis. It's invading into the wall of the trachea. I would not be surprised if maybe it started as a benign chondroma and became a chondrosarcoma. Maybe, yes. That's that, a very good that's a very good point. May I ask a question? If you were to do a major trachea resection, what conduit and you couldn't bring the trachea back together, what would be your conduit of choice to uh, to an asymptote to trachea if you couldn't it wouldn't come together under tension, under minimal tension? Will Freddy? Um, I am so sorry. May, may you please repeat the question a little here? If you had to use a conduit, like for a trachea, if you have to do a major trachea resection and it wouldn't come together without with minimal tension, what conduit would you use to uh, put the trachea back together? Um, doctor, I think this is a very difficult question, but uh, I have done a conduit with the same uh, esophagus with, uh, with, the, with the pectoral or with the latissimus dorsi and with molding uh, with the cartilagon. But usually, uh, Dr. Bertrand in Bogota teaches some very good uh, techniques that can allow us a lot, a lot of trachea. You can free the pericardium for the diaphragm and, and you can gain a lot, a lot of centimeters of the trachea. And of course, the first moment you have, the first thing you have to do is not to cut if you don't know if you can have a, a good plate of, of plane of anastomosis or you don't have it without tension. If you are not going to have that, you, you have to stop. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I think I, of course, um, Unless you're really, uh, you have a high experience in these backup plans, like Will Freddy does, um, you know, unfortunately, you may have no conduit to, uh, to replace the trachea. And if you're truly at that situation, you've already resected and you cannot put the trachea down, then you must do a mediastinal tracheostomy, which is an end tracheostomy, because there is no, um, you know, guaranteed conduit for the trachea. We're still, you know, science has not uh, achieved that yet. There's thoughts of stem cell, impregnated uh, stents, things like that, but they have all failed. So you'll be kind of relegated to having to do very complex flap procedures. Um, and, uh, and I think Will Freddie showed us uh, a few nice cases of using the uh, pericardium or using uh, autologous muscle flaps. Thanks. Yes, I, I think that the, that this patient needs a tracheal resection. I, I, I think that uh, uh, even, even the, the, the tumor is being stable in, in growing or, or, or maybe it's a very slow growing tumor it could uh, it could become a, a sarcoma and a chondrosarcoma uh, in the future. So, uh, what what I think is a, is a very challenging tracheal resection, and I hope, as I've said, that maybe the the tracheal resection could be lesser than the than the the um, the length of the tumor. So. So what I, 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 I will tell you 
the finish of this case. But I think that the agreement or most of the people think that the best approach is to resect. One idea if you did resect is you start from the left chest with the left vat and see what the tumor looks like, maybe separate it uh, and, and maybe get another biopsy to confirm if it's benign or malignant. By a, by a left approach, by a left thoracoscopic approach, for example? Spread it up from the arch as much as you can and from the phrenic nerve, um, and, then, uh, and then proceed to a sternotomy after if, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're continuing. And then you can also do the hilar release uh, from the left vat by dividing the pericardium around the inferior pulmonary and anteriorly and posteriorly. With this case, Abbas, I always um, was thinking in right approach. In... Yeah, I, I don't like it for this one. Me too, because you can expose the carina well. But I think, I think that you might be stuck on the left mediastinum and the left chest because of where oh. this... Okay have trouble lifting it up. I, I, I may be wrong, of course. The sternotomy will be an ideal, I think. What do you think, Will Freddie and uh, any others? I think I will do it by, if I do it, I will do it by sternotomy, I think. And maybe uh, if it is possible, having egg both by hand. Yeah. But would you do a hyler release on Yes, the, the Hyler release is... Uh, we have to do everything. Even the, the one that Dr. Return teaches that the free the pericardium from the diaphragm to to move, mobilize the, all the heart and everything uh, to go up. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And and thanks for uh, for all your opinions. It's uh, they are very valuable in 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 cases like this. All right. It's 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 good to 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 have the, those opinions. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, and thanks thanks for the invitation for today for the presentation, and hope that everyone will have uh, the rest of the month and we'll see you in one month, okay? Yes, thank you, Luke.